Hello, and welcome to the second installment of Salt Makes a Fiber Arts video. I wasn't expecting this, but somebody I know on Discord um, wanted to make themselves some headphone covers to go over the, the pads of headphones, and I was trying to find a good pattern for them, and I noticed that, like, all of the headphones are wildly different sizes and shapes, so... I'm going for uh, making one that I hope will be understandable enough to expand or make it bigger or smaller depending on the size of your headphone and the scale of your yarn. So this is what my finished object looks like. I've already finished the second one here, but I recorded that and the video wasn't very good. I had a really hard time keeping my hand in frame. So I'm trying again now, um, but you can see sort of the basic structure of this is a granny hexagon. So this one has your, it starts with a magic loop and then it has one round of granny hexagon and then the second round of granny hexagon and then it transfers into just plain granny stitch with no increases, which will make it cup up very nicely to fit over your um, headphones. So, to make this you will need yarn and crochet hook. This is just some green yarn that was in my stash. I don't know what kind of yarn it is. I like it with this 4mm hook. Um, you'll need scissors to, you know, cut ends and sew ends and stuff. And you'll need a needle to sew up, to not to sew anything up, but to weave in your ends. I'm including this because I wanted to share that I specifically like this style of needle for this. It's called a sack needle, and as you can see, the tip is wider than the general shaft of the needle. I find it pushes the um, yarn pieces apart so that it's much easier for the yarn to go through. It makes it makes sewing up so much easier than any other style of needle I've ever used. Um, this one I really like. I have another sack needle that is still better than nothing, or still better than a standard needle, but not quite as good as this one. I'm not quite sure what the differences are that make it better, but this one is sharper and I think has a, um, you can see like the shape of the tip is like this. I think this is why I like it better, I'm not sure, but this needle for sewing up. Now we are going to start with a magic loop. Let me get this yarn out of your vision. That'll do. Okay, so we're going to start with a magic loop. Now, a magic loop is kind of difficult, so don't feel bad if you do it wrong the first couple of times. Um, so I have the project end here and the working end going off this way. Um, so you're going to lay the yarn over your hand like this, and then I like to hold it here this way. And then you take this, you wrap it behind two fingers, and then over. So your working end is on top here. See? Um, feel free to try this a couple of times to make sure you get a hang of it. Now, from here, I like to take my working end and hook it behind my pinky like this. I think it makes it a little bit easier to keep everything in place. And now, you're going to take your hook. You're going to go under this, you're going to turn your hook over this way, you're going to go over that, pull it, and then you're going to flip your hook back up, and that'll, that'll make this little twist here, which will make everything stay in place a little bit better. Now at this point you can kind of hold everything carefully and take it off your fingers, and there you go, you have a magic loop. Now, lots of people I see, um, what's the word? I see do a, 
a chain up of one to secure this. I don't personally find that necessary, so I'm just going to go straight into crocheting. So this first round, well, when double crocheting, you do a chain up of two, so that's two chains. And then this first round is made of clusters of three double crochet and then three chains. Um, now, in granny stitch, I consider my chain up part of the... I, I consider my chain up the first stitch. It looks a little bit better that way, um, just in my experience. So this counts as one double crochet in our first cluster. And then we're going to go on and we're going to do our second double crochet and our third double crochet. So we have three double crochets here, uh, one two, three, and then we're going to do three chains. One, two, three. And then again, three double crochets. One, two, three, and three chains, one, two, three, three double crochets, one, two, three, and there's half of our round. Now this is where you, um, I find that when working magic loop you want to be crocheting over this tail this whole time. So when I'm about halfway done with a round, I will reassess if this tail is long enough. I don't think it is. So I'm just going to pull it out so that I can be confident that I'll be crocheting over it for the whole length. Um, so again, I'm going to go back to my cluster. So three chains, three double crochets. Three chains, three double crochets, and that's one, two, three, four, five, so I have one more cluster to make. Three chains, three double crochets, and then you're going to end with three chains. And that is your first round. So now you're going to uh, slip stitch to your first cluster. I like to go right in right there, right here, um, and then I usually flip it over and I like to make sure that I have two loops on my hook. You can see one here and one there. And then you pull through and then pull that loop straight through. And there is your first round. At this point, you can tighten up um, I like to have a very tight center for my granny stitches, but um, you might want something looser. I would say don't tighten it up very much right now. Once you've done the whole thing, you can um, tighten it up as much as you want. It is much easier to tighten it than it is to loosen it, so just go with something like this for now and then continue on to your next round. So in this round, we will be increasing in every corner. So we'll do two clusters here, 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 and two clusters here. Um, now, I don't think this is technically the correct way to do granny stitches, but 
I found that my chain up alternates between whether it's the first stitch of the round or the last stitch of the round. Um, so since the last round it was the first stitch of the round, this time it'll be the last stitch of the round. So I'm going to do a chain up of two and this will be part of the second cluster in this chain three space. And then chain one because that will be, so maybe you can tell, the chain up is the stitch and the chain one is what you do between clusters, or between increases. So I've chained three, and now I'm going to move on to this. So I'm, once again, three double crochets. One. Two. Three. And then I'm going to chain three and then do three more double crochets in this same corner. And then again, when a space isn't increasing, you only chain one. So I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to skip forward to this next corner here with three double crochets and then I'm gonna chain three and then once again three more double crochets And then I finished that whole corner, so this time I'm just going to chain one and then move forward to the next space and do three double crochets. And then chain three and three more double crochets. And I will meet you at the end of this round. All right, I am just about to start my last corner. I've done my chain one to go in between this corner and the next corner. I'm going to start with another cluster of three double crochets. And then three chains. And then you'll remember that I said that this chain up counts as part of the last cluster in the round. So we're only going to do two more double crochets here. So that's one, two double crochets, and then we will slip stitch right here in this stitch. See right there. And then once again, Flip over, make sure you have the two loops on your hook, pull a loop through, and pull through. Now, at this point, I'm going to once again tighten this down a little bit. And then, this is the first time uh, to the, or the best time to start checking and seeing if your thing is big enough. So this is probably big enough, or this is big enough to cover this, uh, because it'll sort of, the, the parts where it's sticking out and not sticking out will sort of regularize as you go. Um, so from here, I would switch to my cup shape, but just in case you're using a smaller yarn than I am, or you have a larger pair of headphones than I do, I'm going to show you how to do one more round of hexagon um, before I continue on. Uh, I'm going to do one more round of hexagon to show you how to do it, and then I'm going to rip that out and continue on as if from here uh, so that I can show you how to size the cup. So your next round of hexagon the reason I'm showing one more is because this is where you start having stitches in the middle. So 
Uh, last time we did a chain up of three, so this time we'll do a chain up of two. And then this is going to be part of our first cluster. So we're going into the, this chain one space here, and we are only going to do two double crochets in that space. Well, a three double crochet cluster, but one is the chain up. So that's all to go in that chain one space, and you can see, you can tell the difference between a chain one space and a corner, I think, pretty easily. Um, being able to read your work is a pretty basic crochet skill, so you should be able to see there's a chain one space and a corner, and a chain one space and a corner. And now, uh, here, we're going to chain one. Mm, well, if my hook stays in my work. We're going to chain one, and then we're going to move forward to this corner. We're going to work our corners like we've worked all of our previous corners with three double crochets, three chains, and then three more double crochets. So you see, just like that, a totally normal corner. And now at this point, we're starting a typical side. So we're going to chain one, only one this time, um, because we're not chaining three for a corner. And then we're going to go into this chain one space with three double crochets. And then again, we're going to chain one because this isn't part of a corner. We're going to skip forward to our corner and do three double crochets, a chain three, and then three more double crochets. And each round that you do this hexagon, um, the number of single cluster spaces will increase by one uh, per side. So I'm doing, I did zero single cluster spaces per side last round. I'm doing one single cluster space per side this round. Uh, I'll do more uh, single cluster spaces per side uh, in each subsequent round. So again, I'm doing a single cluster space here. So I have three double crochets and a chain one, and then three more double crochets, a chain three, and three more double crochets. And you'll just continue like that around. I will, um, I'm not actually going to finish this round. I'm going to go get a blanket that I have made with hexagons, and I'll show you what some more finished hexagons look like. Be right back. All right, so here I have, uh, this blanket was made out of hexagons made with a two double crochet cluster granny stitch, but it's the same otherwise. So you can see here, there's our first round. Here's our second round where we just have increases in every corner. Here's our third round where we have uh, one single cluster and then an increase and then a single cluster and then an increase and a single cluster and an increase all the way around. And then here we have our second or our, our next round has a single cluster and then a single cluster and then an increase, and then a single cluster, and a single cluster, and an increase. Um, and you'll continue like that until your um, hexagon is as big as you need it, so that the points are sticking out over the sides of your headphones just very slightly. Just a little bit is really all you need, um, in my experience. So. This is what your hexagon might look like if it gets bigger and bigger and bigger.
I have pulled out everything I did um, in the last round, or to, to show you how the bigger rounds look. Um, so we've just finished our second round here, and I'll be moving on to the cup. Now, the cup is worked in plain granny stitch, no increases, which means that no matter what you do all the way around, you're going to work three double crochets and then a chain one, and then three double crochets and then a chain one no matter what. So uh, we're going to do our chain up of two, and this counts as our first double crochet, and then we're going to do two more double crochets here. And that's our first cluster. We're going to chain one, and then even though this is a corner and typically we would do two clusters in it, we're only doing one cluster in this corner. So just three double crochets. And this is what will cause the fabric to cup up instead of laying flat. So just three double crochets there and then a single chain, and then move on to your next chain space, and work three double crochets. Like that. Again, a single chain. Again, we're at another corner. This will only have a single cluster in it. So just work your three double crochets. And just this quickly, you can already start to see how it's gone from laying relatively flat to starting to make that nice cup shape that we're looking for. So I'm going to show you one more time. We're going to do three double crochets in this space, and then we're going to chain one and do three double crochets in this corner space. And you'll continue this around. Um, how many you do will vary depending on how big your granny stitch was, um, but I will meet you at the end of the round. Alright, I'm just about to start my last cluster of the round. I've done my chain one, and I'm going in to do three double crochets. And then I'll chain one, and then once again we're slip stitching to right here, right in there, turn it over, this one's being a little bit fiddly about getting to, oh sorry, let me do that again so it's a little bit more visible. So again, right there, right in there, flip it over, get in. Um, and do your slip stitch. So you can see we're very clearly getting a cup now. You can make it lay flat, but it doesn't really look like it wants to or anything. Um, and so we will be continuing on to our second round. Um, so we're going to do a chain up of three this time. That's two to be part of the last cluster of the round, and one as the stitch. And now this round should be a little bit easier to remember than the last round because you don't ever have three uh, a chain three space that you're working into, but it is exactly the same. It's three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, chain one, all the way around. So that's one, two, three double crochets, and then one chain, and then one, two, three double crochets, and one chain, and you're just going to continue that around. Again, I'll meet you in our last cluster. All right, and here I am, right about to start my last cluster. So I'm going to do my last chain one, and then I will do two double crochets in here, because again, we started the row with, or started the round with a chain up that will be 
uh, the last stitch of our last cluster. So that's one. Excuse me, have to redo that one. My yarn split a little bit. That is one, two double crochets, and then our slip stitch is going to go right here, right there, and flip it over to make sure you've got those two loops on your hook and then pull through and through. So that's our second round um, in our cup, and you can really, really see how it starts cup. Hi, welcome back. I dropped you a little bit. So I've just finished the second plain round here, um, and I'm going to show you how this is not quite big enough for my headphones yet. So you can see how it fits over, but it really, you're looking to get it all the way up over this part where it comes back in, because this, putting a drawstring through so that it stays here, is what's going to keep it nice and secure on your headphones. So this, definitely not big enough yet. Um, in my other ones, I needed three rounds to achieve that, but I think in this one, I might need four. We'll see. But that's the... If, if you are here, or if you are there, then do not stop. You're not done yet. So let's start our next round. Once again, you're going to do, this time, a chain up of two. And this is going to count as the first stitch in your first cluster. And then again, chain one, three double crochets, one, two, three, chain one, three double crochets, and I will meet you again in our last cluster here. Alright, here I am about to start my last cluster. I've already done my chain one, so I'm going to do three double crochets. Chain one and then slip stitch, I think, here. Hmm... Yeah, slip stitch there. And now I'm gonna test once again to see if this is big enough for my headphones. So I've done three rounds, and I think in this case, this is not big enough yet. I'm going to need at least one more round uh, to get it where I want. So let's start that out. Our fourth round of double crochets, or our fourth round of plain granny stitch. Um, this time we're going to do a chain up of three. That's two to count as the last part of the last cluster and one to count as that chain one. And then, you know the drill by now. Three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, chain one, all the way around. And I'll uh, once again meet you at the end of this round on our last cluster so that we can uh, test whether this fits together. All right, here I am about to start my last cluster. I've already done my chain one, and so this time I'm gonna do two double crochets and then slip to that, chain up, chain. So that's one, two, 
and then slip stitch right here. Yeah, right here. Right in there like that. Do your slip stitch. And once again, let's check and see if this is big enough. Okay, at this point, I would say this is probably big enough. Um, I'm... So I'm actually planning on ripping this project out once I'm done, because I already have my finished um, covers. But I would go one more round, I think. Um, you know what? I'm going to show you what one more round looks like so that you can see it fitting properly. Um, so this is starting our, starting our fifth round. We're going to do, this time, a chain up of two because that will be the first stitch in our first cluster. And then you know the drill by now. I will meet you once again for testing at the end of this round. All right, I've just finished my... Mm, I forgot to do a chain one there. I was gonna say I've just finished my slip stitch, but I sure haven't. Chain one, and then do my slip stitch. Mm. Why is this being difficult? Oh my god. Okay, there we go. That was way harder than it needed to be. Okay, so I'm pretty confident this should fit this time. Let's try it out. Oh yeah, that fits nicely. So you can see now how it'll be super easy to cinch that up over this part where it pulls in. Um, and now this last step is optional. Um, I chose to do it. You can see there's a round of single crochets at the top of my granny stitch. I think granny stitch looks better that way, but if you like it this way, you could stop here and be fine. But in case you do want to do that granny stitch or that single crochet, let me show you what that looks like. So you're going to start with a chain up of one, and then you're going to go into your next stitch here, and you're going to do a single crochet, and then a second single crochet, and then... so. You're only going to do two single crochets into this first cluster, and then one single crochet into every chain space, and then three single crochets into all of your other clusters. And I like to do my single crochets starting here. So you look at this, see how there's a little hole here? This is where I like to start my single crochets for um, granny stitches. And then one into the chain space, and then again, right here, one, two, three single crochets, one into the chain space, and then right here, one, two, three single crochets, one into the chain space, etc, etc around. Alright, I have gotten to the last chain space before my single crochets start, so I'm going to go one into this chain space, and then I'm going to go one in... Where does this one go? I think it goes right... You know, I'm not going to bother with that one. You don't have to bother with that one. Um, at this point, I would do what's called an invisible join. 
unfortunately, I don't want to cut this yarn because I'm just going to rip this out because I already have headphone covers, so I can't show you how to do an invisible join. Um, but you would also be fine with just doing a slip stitch join. That's fine. I just like an invisible join a little tiny bit better, but this is fine too. Um, so you can see that gives you a nice, it's a much stronger looking edge than the chain edge looked like. So that's why I like it. Um, and now at this point, you're going to thread your drawstring. Um, I'm just going to use a pre-cut drawstring that I already have. I went for, so this is my finished one, and I went for the drawstring to fit this plus a few inches on each end. See? So it goes all the way around here, totally loose, and then there's a few extra inches, and that should totally be enough to cinch it up nice and tight and tie a bow. Um, now, I know that if you started with two rounds in your hexagon, then your drawstring will fit very nicely. Um, if you do three, it may or may not, but let me just really quickly pull this drawstring out and show you how to string a drawstring. So I'm gonna take my needle, thread my needle, and then you're going to start by going down into a chain space, and up into the next chain space, and down, and up, and down, and up, however many times will fit on your needle. Um, you can also do this on a crochet hook. I find it doesn't work as well on these ergonomic hooks that have the big space, but if you have a planar hook that's very long, not very long, but like doesn't have the ergonomic handle, then you can um, hook it over as much as you like. So you see it's gone down and up and down and up. And once again, since we went up here, we're going to go down and up and down and up and down and up. And that is our drawstring done. You can see they very conveniently come out right here like this. Now at this point, I found that I had to sort of nudge the drawstring up into the top of these chain spaces. Um, it likes to sit at the bottom and you want it sitting at the top. And now you just slide that over your thing, over your headphone, and then grab your drawstrings, kind of hold this in place and pull, and then you can just tie a nice little bow. This is a very awkward angle for tying a bow, but hopefully you can see. Then just make the ears of the bow and the tail of the bow as big as you want. Or make the ears of the bow as big as you want, and then you can cut off the tail of the bow. Um, and that is one completed uh, headphone cover. Now, you should... Actually, before you put the drawstring in, you should sew in your ends. Um, again, I'm just ripping this out so I will not sew in my ends, but you should do that. This is a good time to tighten your... Um, before you sew in your ends is when you should tighten your thing down as much as you want. So you see over here, this has ended up a little bit smaller than all of the other chain spaces, which is exactly how I like it. Um, and another thing to keep in mind is this headphone is my dedicated computer headphones right now, so I need to have the aux cable available so you can see I have carefully positioned this so that the hole for the aux cable is accessible in one of the chain spaces. That's why I like the granny stitch for headphone covers more than I like making a solid headphone cover is because your aux cable is easy to access. Now, none of the buttons on this pair of headphones worked before I started this, so 
I cannot tell you if it will get in the way of your buttons, unfortunately. Um, but I think it should be fine. Like, I can reach into this chain space and thumb over all of my buttons. Again, I can't, you can't hear them click because they don't click. This is the only one that clicks. Uh, but you can just reach into a chain space and fiddle with it a little bit and it seems to work just fine. So there you go. That is a headphone cover for your headphones. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Um, goodbye.